Hey, welcome to the full Helium 10 black box tutorial for Amazon product research. In this video, I'm going to show you in a step-by-step -step and easy to follow manner how to use the Helium 10 black box, which is a product research tool by Helium 10. For product research on Amazon, I'm going to share my best tips and tricks with you. And also I'm going to show you how to use all the parts of black box so you can enhance your product research abilities and hopefully find some great products for you to sell on Amazon. And my name is Vova, a seller on Amazon, I've been selling there for over four years now. And on this channel, I share different tips, tricks, hacks for Amazon sellers. So please subscribe if you're in this niche. And now let's go to my computer and start the video. And down in the description of the video, you also find the link to create a free Helium 10 account and also some discount coupons for Helium 10. So enjoy. Now let's go and start with the black box. So here we have on the left product research and black box. Once you're going to click on it, it's going to bring you here. And we have different parts for the black box. We have products, keywords, competitors, niche and product targeting. Now, what is the black box? Pretty much black box is going to give you all the uh, catalog of products that Helium 10 has. And then based on different criteria, you can pull out products from here and get them as results. So I'm going to show you how we can play with all these filters in order to get different products. And we have many filters to go through. So let's start right now. So again, remember, there's a huge catalog of products for Helium 10 that they have like millions upon millions of products. And based on the criteria, you can get the specific ones that you need or want. So let's go and start from the left to the right. So first one is categories. You can select the category of the product that you would like to sell. So for example, we have different categories here ranging from, you know, baby books, automotive, health and household, handmade products, musical instruments, and a bunch of other stuff. Just select which ones you need. So let's just select the simple one like home and kitchen. Let's go with patient loan and baby. Okay, we have three categories selected. That means that the results that you're going to see are going to be from these three categories and not any other category. So for example, we're not going to see books here because we didn't select them. Next one is the monthly revenue. Estimate revenue over the past 30 days. So for the products that are going to be showing from these three categories, so let's see what we want to be the minimum revenue and the maximum revenue for the month. So for example, we want to see products that do at least $4,000 a month and maximum of $12,000 a month. Now, again, all these kind of criteria, feel free to play with them as you wish. I'll also be giving you different gold nuggets that I know connected to different things here. However, there's no right or wrong here. Just play with it and think in your mind how you can get the best product. So for example, if you are a new seller, you don't really want to be looking at products that are minimally selling like $100,000 or maybe even more $300,000 because it's going to be hard for you to compete in these niches, right? So maybe go with something lower. So maybe you're going to see products that are selling like $3,000 a month to $6,000 a month, just for example. Yeah, this is just one example of how to be coming to this parameter with some thought in mind. Yes, not just a putting random numbers, right? So let's say this monthly revenue may be like up to 8,000. And the next one is price. So what is the listed selling price of the item? So here you're going to see, and you're going to actually select the prices of items that we want to see popping up. So let's say that we don't want to, you know, have any like products that are too cheap, maybe priced $5 maximum. So let's do like products that are a bit more on the higher tier from say $25 to $37, right? So that's mid-range products, I would say. And these are the prices that are going to appear. And the next one is review count. So minimum review count and maximum review count. Like generally, it could be nice to see products that don't have many reviews that still sell well. Okay, so that's a big idea about reviews. So if you get inside an niche that has tons upon tons of reviews and as a new seller, it might be harder for you. So maybe if it's a younger niche or just a niche where people can't really or don't know how to get reviews, which is pretty good then you can be the one that has more knowledge with getting reviews and the more reviews you have usually is better for sales. So let's say that we want to see products with 70 maximum review count and minimum review count of say eight. And the next one is review rating. What is the review rating? It's Amazon customer reviews from poor to five, which is outstanding. One to five, which is poor to outstanding. Now also I want to tell you that you don't need to input criteria in all of these things. Because usually if we're going to fill everything here, we're going to make the search that narrow that we might not even get any results for that. All right. So <laughs> play with that, but know that you must not, or you should not, or it's up to you actually to fill everything or not. Maybe you will fill everything and you exactly know how to use everything together to get the best products. But 
it might also get to a place where there's no products, there are no products that the black box can give you. So again, review rating is Amazon customer reviews from one, which is poor, to outstanding, which is five. Now, the big trick here, or it's just a trick, to find products that don't have such a high review rating, but they're still selling well. So that means that even products with bad reviews that people are still not satisfied with the product perhaps, or not happy with the current products in the niche, they're still buying it. There's still revenue happening. So you wanna put the review rating maximum, say four stars. Again, minimum, it's up to you, but like say three stars. It can be even two stars, doesn't really matter. But maximum is four stars because we're saying, okay, we have products that are in these categories that are making like between three and eight K bucks in revenue per month, and their maximum rating is four. You understand? That's the idea here. Next is the shipping size. So what is the size of the products that we want to see? So if you, and generally I would not recommend you starting with oversized items because it means they're generally big and you will have to ship them to Amazon and you have to pay a lot for the shipping. But also the fees on Amazon are going to be higher for oversized items. Now, of course, you might have oversized items that can still make good profit, but with the shipping part, it's gonna be very expensive to you, usually, to ship oversized items. However, you can still try. Maybe there's gonna be less competition here, but usually, you would like to select small standard size or large standard size, because in these two criteria of sizes, it's gonna be lesser fees, and generally, the products are not gonna be that big. I guess you can either select them or not select them. Let's just select large standard size here. And these are like the basic filters. So for example, once you click on search, let's see if we even get anything here. Yeah, we had two, 200 plus products. So with this criteria that we've put in, okay, in these three categories, we're gonna have different products here. And as you can see also, we get like Christmas products here because I'm recording this in early 2021. And let's see if we can exclude the, uh, yeah, here it is. There's exclude title keywords. Okay, we'll get to that in a bit. But if you wanna get less products with specific keywords in the title, you can exclude title keywords. Why I'm telling this now? Because I just saw there's Christmas stuff here because recently we had Christmas, yeah? And these products are still showing up. They're having pretty high revenues and they are still present because Christmas was just a few weeks ago and you wanna exclude the keywords. So for example, if you don't wanna Christ, Christmas and Xmas and yeah, so you, you can kind of exclude these keywords, okay? So that's just a, another thing we can add and you see, boom, now it disappeared. So we're gonna get to these filters, but what I wanna show you is up here, you're gonna, or actually down here, you're gonna see all the results of the uh, products that come up. For example, this Duraflame Campfire Roasting Sticks came up and it says that it has four sellers selling this product. It's priced at $29.70. It has 133 monthly sales. There's a monthly revenue of $3,700. And the best seller rank here, the reviews and actions here, we can actually add it to your list of favorite products or go to product page on Amazon. So this product as all the other products here, they just fit the criteria that we just put in, okay? And in this way, we can select products to play with and check with the black box. Now, let's continue a bit to the advanced filters. And in this place, we can kind of see with deeper filters and usually people kind of use the more simple filters, which is completely fine. But if you learn how to use the more advanced filters, maybe you're gonna find what other people are not finding because they are maybe a bit too lazy to check out these filters. So let's see what we have here. We have the first one, which is called sales year over year. So that's percentage change over the past 12 months. So if you wanna see products that have like percentage over year increasing on say, is it 20%, 30%, like find the niches that are, are kind of going up and maybe blowing up or just simply going up, you can use the, again, the minimum amount of percentage that it grew over 12 months. So for example, you wanna see like a minimum 10%. So you're gonna see niches that at least had like 10% growth a year over year for the last the past 12 months. So you see when I clicked search, we can see that straight away many products disappeared and we only have these other products that stayed, okay? And we have the sales year over year. You see this parameter here, which is at least 10%. And some have huge percent like DIY garden kit for kids is it had 385 sales over year. 
and in 90 days it was also really huge but there was also the Christmas not too long ago so that kind of makes sense plus there was the pandemic so maybe that affected it but generally I'm not gonna <laughs> dive deep and understand why a garden kit for kids is on such a rise now but that's a parameter you can use also for your advanced filters sales year over year next one is price change percentage change over the past 90 days so if you want to see products that got an up in price in the last 90 days, okay, to see something that's growing in price and because some niches go down in price. And again, you can do like 50%, 10%, whatever you want to see. And then you're going to see niches that had a growth of 50%. Now, again, you can use these parameters aside or I would say not really one by one, but you can mix them with all the other ones. Remember that maybe sometimes if I'll click here, 50% change in price and I'm gonna click on search. Yeah, I have 50 products that came up with, the, uh, with this specific criteria. Remember again, this is for the products that are in these three categories with this specific monthly revenue that have 50% price change over the last 90 days. Okay, so in this way we narrow down essentially the results we get. And then we go and check what we've got. So for example, here we have six spot uh, regal trunk, six spot tiered plant stand. Here's a plant stand and the price trend over the last nine days is has increased in 71%. Now also, again, I'm recording this during uh, early 2021. So there was a huge rise in prices over the Christmas usually. Over Christmas, things go up in price. So you think also about this, like which month of the year you're using that, but it's also a cool, cool criteria to use. Next one is sales change. Percentage changed in monthly sales over the past 90 days. And again, in this way, you can also use like maybe what grew in sales, 100%. And then you can click on search. And here we have many, many products that grew in, uh, in the sales. But again, remember that it's Christmas time in the last 90 days. So many things grew in sales. However, it could be nice for you Yes, to see which are potentially good products to sell next Christmas, maybe you're gonna see, oh, all right, so these Christmas socks, which kind of makes sense, they grew in, in their sales like 200%. So in this way, you can kind of understand the sales changes. Now, of course, outside of Christmas, it could be really nice to see, or you can simply include or exclude Christmas title keywords, but it still doesn't really matter because they're products that are not connected to Christmas that still go up in Christmas, like any giftable item, for example, which usually really goes up during Christmas. So that's sales change, also another parameter. Then you have best sales period. So this is kind of calendar month in which a product sees its highest sales volume. So maybe if you're looking to sell seasonal products and you're like, yeah, I want to sell like summer products. Now you're like, yeah, I want to make a quick buck now. It's what, it's like beginning of January now and I want to get in with some summer products maybe or actually even products that are connected to the spring or whatever. So you can choose the best sales period. So here you can click and then you're going to, for example, select a given month. So for example, in 2021, Oh, that's like that. Sorry, that's for 2021. But for 2020, we have the best sales month. So if you want to see what were the best months of sales for 2020, June. All right. It, that was the best sales period of all the given products that will appear. Probably we're going to see products that are more seasonal for summer and not necessarily here. We have some different kind of uh, microfiber stuff. And not necessarily that we're gonna see summer products in baby, handmade, homemade, and uh, patient loan. Although in patient loan, there are many like uh, products for patient loan, which usually is a niche that generally goes up during the summer. But yeah, that's just best sales period. It's just one more parameter to check products when they were selling in their highest volume. Next one is sales to reviews. Ratio of monthly sales to a total number of reviews. So for example, if we want to have like 500 here that means for one review there was 500 sales so a product with two reviews might have a thousand sales you're not going to see many of these and sometimes it might tend to be you see we didn't even find any matching products because we have 500 sales and min and maximum monthly revenue of 8,000 and the price is 25 dollars you see so i immediately excluded any potential uh, like how to say results okay so let's just remove this, for example. Let's just remove all these uh, revenues. Let's do a minimum of 10,000. Let's see how this one works. And let's just leave the reviews. Yeah, let's just re review kind of like that. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah, now we have some products. And we're gonna have usually products that have huge revenues, but with low amount of reviews, okay? Now, 
here we have just some, I don't know what the hell that is, that's been Zen sack and some stuff connected to sleep. But here I can exaggerate it, so I did like a very, very low or very high sales to reviews. So that means you see here we have 15 reviews and the product did about $720,000 in sales, which is pretty cool, right? Now you gotta see what the heck that is. That might be just one specific variation of a product, but sales to reviews is pretty nice. If you wanna see, maybe don't use 500, use something go over, but you can see like for a product that has like 20 reviews and it did like, for example, 300 sales a month, okay? So not as high as I did, like one review, 500 sales, but like maybe 50 sales to reviews. So a product with 10 reviews did 500 sales. That's cool, okay, that's cool. So we can again search. And again, remember that it all is connected also to the review count and the review rating that you've already set. And here we have more products, okay, that did pretty good amounts of revenue with higher, with lower amount of reviews. So 23 reviews did 84,000 in sales. What is this broccoli seeds for sprouting? All this uh, seeds kind of market grew up as far as I know during the pandemic because people were like a lot at home and they were like, let's grow some stuff. And yeah, people were growing stuff. So that's sales to reviews, pretty cool thing. Next one is monthly sales. That's essentially how many units were sold over the past 30 days. So if you want to see generally like at least products that sold like 500 units, then just put 500 minimum here and maximum as you wish. Monthly sales, best seller rank, Amazon awarded rank based on recent historical sales. That's the BSR of a product that you're looking at. Now you can base it on BSR, but know that BSR differs from Pace alone and Home and Kitchen. For example, 5,000 BSR in Home and Kitchen is say 70 sales per day and 5,000 BSR in patient alone might be like 15 sales per day. Also it changes based on the uh, season of the uh, year. So I wouldn't use that too much, especially if you're using different categories cause yeah, it might be different, but you can play with BSR as well. Next one is number of sellers. How many active sellers are there in the product? So for example, maybe you would like to base it on maximum one amount of sellers if you wanna exclude like products that are arbitrage products where people are like maybe five sellers to one product, maybe someone selling a branded product and a few people competing for the same product. So there are gonna be more sellers. So if you wanna exclude these, you might wanna do like one or two maximum because sometimes someone has an FBM offer, an FBA offer it means that on the same listing, the same seller has the same kind of product selling. So, you know, you can do like two amount of sellers maximum. You see it kind of narrow down the niche even more. So that's number of active sellers. Next one is fulfillment method. So we have FBA, FBM and Amazon. So if you wanna see products that only Amazon sells, so you can check, go and check these products. And then if you wanna compete with Amazon, it's not always the good idea, but sometimes there might be a competitor that is Amazon, but still a few FBA products and FBM sellers that's still doing quite well. Or you wanna see where there are FBM listings, maybe there are niches where there are almost no FBA sellers that are still making pretty good sales and you as an FBA seller can get in. This will give you some advantage with the, uh, the uh, like different badges you're gonna get as FBA seller and stuff like that. Next one is number of images. So that's number of images on the product page. And what does that mean? That means like, for example, we have a listing that has maximum three images but it's still making like $30,000 a month, for example. And that means like for a product that is not very optimized, it's still making very good sales. So you can try and add more images, make them better and have your product selling better. That's number of images. Next, we have variation count. Like if you wanna find products with variations specifically, so you wanna get into a niche where you have many variations because you wanna create a product with variations for some reason, then you can do that. Or again, you don't wanna enter products with variations, so you're gonna put maximum one count of variations, and this way you will have no variations products. Next one is the weight. If you wanna find products that are very lightweight, and that's good usually because it's gonna be cheaper to ship them, so you can use LB, here it's counted in LB, so just put maximum of say 0.1 LB. Yeah, if you wanna have like lightweight products, not necessarily lightweight, but just uh, not heavy products. Then we have title keyword search. If we wanna have any keywords in the title specifically, for example, you wanna have products that are in the home and kitchen that only have like in their title knife, for example. Well, essentially you wanna find different knives that's gonna be a knife or 
not a knife. Maybe you want to find sets. So it's going to be a set in home and kitchen or in baby or in both of them. Okay. And again, remember that it all includes all the other parameters here. So if you input parameter here, here and here, it's going to pull out everything based on your criteria. Next one is exclude title keyword search. So again, we can exclude things that are written in the title. Also pretty easy. Next one is brand search, exact brand name separated by comma. So if you want to find specific brands that maybe inspire you or you want to see how they're doing in different categories, so you can use that or you can exclude brands. So you will exclude brand names and then you will not get the results by these brands. Also, you can clear the filters here if you're like, well, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I want to start from the beginning. So you just click on clear filters and then you do that. It's going to clear everything. So down here, you're going to have again, all the, have all the products. We have the sellers on the listing, the price, the monthly sales, the monthly revenue, the best seller rank, the reviews and actions where you can actually edit to the list and go to product page on Amazon. Here you can also kind of sort them by different things. So if you want to see price low to high or review count low to high or number of images low to high, etc., etc., you have another filter here. You can download to CSV, kind of have it in an Excel file for yourself. And you can also see if you want to show advanced info or not. So in this way, you can kind of remove it or not remove it. We have those sales last year, sales year over year, if it increases or not, sale trends in 90 days, increases or decreases, best sales period and sales to review. Sales to reviews is the one we mentioned here. So for example, we had the 50. So this one has what it had like 1,100 sales and the sales to reviews 51. That means like 23 reviews. And for each review, it got an at least 50 sales. So 23x51 is going to be somewhere along this monthly sales number. So this is for the products part of the black box. And now let's go through the keywords part of black box. In the keywords, essentially, it's kind of similar to products, but it's not exactly the same. The keywords will show you actually the keywords that are going to be popping up through our search criteria. And what does that mean? That means that here we will see what kind of, for example, search volume or what kind of monthly revenue a specific keyword does on Amazon. And let me kind of explain you better on the surface kind of level and let me show you how it works. So for example, it says here, what is the search volume? Estimate number of searches from the past 30 days. So we're going to have a keyword that has say at least 4,500 searches and maximum of 6,200 searches, all right? per month, yes, and this specific keyword, yes, does in monthly revenue for the top products from say $5,000 to $7,000, okay, we're going to find these kind of uh, more affordable to mortals product. And again, we have the price here, the review count, review rating, word count, pretty much all the criteria that we used from previous ones. Let me just see if there are another criteria that is not kind of present in here. Oh yeah, there are a few things I'm going to show it to you. The other criteria, for example, we have the uh, age. I think it was not shown in the products and competing products, broad reach potential, computer revenue, computer reviews and computer ratings. We're going to talk about that, but let me show you what does keywords mean. Let's click on search and we have for these search volumes, for this monthly revenue, for this price. Oh, let's do a price also. Let's do like minimum of 20 up to $36 price for the products going to appear. Let's click on search. Kind of want to narrow it down a bit more. And what's going to happen here is that you are not going to have specific product. You're going to have a keyword that has all this, again, search criteria that you've entered. So for example, we have a different frozen birthday decorations, right? Or finger vibrator, which also is a product that fits the criteria, right? Or wax seal warmer, all right? Or papaya leaf extract. Another thing that I would recommend you generally with this, and it's something that Bradley from Helium 10 also shared, it kind of makes sense, is the word count. So for example, I saw words like flatbread or lip sense. And usually when people search for one worded keywords, they're just using them to search and not to buy, maybe to learn about the niche, to educate themselves on something. Yes, people do that on Amazon as well. So the word count usually will do at least two. That means the keywords are going to be bigger. So for example, instead of a person searching for knives, here's going to be searching for kitchen chef knife. That's bigger. That might be even three word count minimum. But even if you do it two, it's kind of fine. And this way you also eliminate tons of other simple products. 
And as you can see here, we have different keywords that are connected. So white shoulders perfume for women. That's very, very kind of narrow search. So person that is looking for a perfume for women specifically, and that's white shoulders. I'm not exactly sure what does that mean, but, or Naruto shirts for men, Naruto, the cartoon, right? Shirts for men. So people here are looking for Naruto specifically shirts, that are shirts and for men. People here are very aware of what they want to find, right? Or Zelda shirt or decorative shelf brackets or whatever. So, and then from here, yes, you're going to click on this kind of button here and you're going to click view on Amazon. And then you're going to go to Amazon and see this product, okay, on Amazon. So, again, and why does this product specifically show? Because it fits our criteria of 4,500 to 6,200 search volume per month people searching this product for month. Again, that's estimated and month revenue between five and $7,000 for the top products. And that's what we see. So all these kind of keywords, they match our criteria. And in this way, you can also find more ideas for products. That's pretty cool. So I also wanted to show you some specific kind of advanced filters that you can use here that we didn't cover in the product section, I believe. So first one would be the age of the listing. So what is the listing of the product? So if that's in month, so you can find more mature products, for example, that have lower amount of reviews for these keywords or specifically newer products, that's age of the product. So again, you wanna perhaps, if you wanna find a niche that has lower amount of reviews and bigger age, very aged products that don't have many reviews. Maybe again, that's a niche where people don't know how to get many reviews. And if you have some ninja tactics for getting reviews, then you might be just using them to compete in that niche better. Or for example, we have competing products, number of competing products for the keyword. So again, in this way you can do minimum or maximum. More competing products might be more saturated niche, less might be less saturated niche. So you can play with the competing products as well, if you will. Then there's a broad reach potential. Potential of a keyword to generate new keywords and broad match campaigns on the scale of one to 10. Let me explain you what does that mean. So for example, if you wanna have keywords that have very big potential to generate like keywords and broad campaigns, that means like, for example, it might be, for example, if it's a kitchen knife, that might be something that has a lot of broad reach potential because there is kitchen, there is knife, there might be very, very big amount of keywords connected to that product, which in sense is pretty good because you can generate more keywords to get sales from. However, it might be also a kind of less narrowed niche in a way, but if you do maximum of one broad reach potential, let's click in search here, we are gonna see less phrases, you see, and the products usually that have less broad reach potential are gonna be very, very specific. So, Bajos Dave's Killer Bread. I'm not sure what does that exactly mean, but maybe that's a, some sort of bread. Let's view on Amazon or what the heck that is. Oh, maybe, or either sometimes you find brand names here as well, all right? So that's something to think about as well, but like Baby Yoda Birthday Decorations. That's specifically for Baby Yoda Birthday Decorations, right? That means, like it's not really connected to something else aside of Baby Yoda, all right? So it, there's not gonna be broad reach potential really for this kind of product. You see it's even zero here <laughs> or one, no, that's zero. So this is kind of another way to find very, very laser focused things, all right? So for example, let's see what I have. Dangly earrings for women fashion. You know, the fashion here is like an addition. Very big keywords here. <laughs> Or let's see, Bernaz, Bernese Mountain Dog Gifts. I'm not sure what is Bernese Mountain. Maybe Bernese Mountain, it's either kind of a dog or maybe that's uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. Maybe that's the this specific dog that you have. So there's not gonna be really broad reach to other products cause it's like specifically for this dog, for the uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. Okay, if you understand the kind of the broad reach potential in this way, so you can play with that as well. Or if you wanna see at least 10 for the broad reach potential. Okay, oh, it didn't even match anything. Let's do an eight here. Let's do eight. Let's see, maybe we have products, yeah, that have a higher broad reach potential, all right? So lava rock, yeah, because it has rock inside, lava, it has like a broad reach potential, okay? If, if that makes sense. So again, broad reach potential, potential for keyword to generate new keywords and broad match campaigns as if hopefully that makes sense. If not, ask 
and I'll give you an answer. Next one is Compet Revenue. Min max number of top 10 ranking products for keyword search results that have more than the selected estimated revenue in the last 30 days. So we're gonna have like more than $10,000 for minimum of like seven top competitors. That means that for the keyword that we're gonna find, at least seven of the top competing products or actually kind of competitors are gonna have more than $10,000 in revenue. So in this way, we can actually see products where the top of the search is divided by all the products and not maybe only one product that's eating all the pie. So that's a pretty cool filter to use as well. The next one is competitor reviews. Minimum maximum number of top 10 ranking products of keyword search results that have less than the selected number of review ratings. So say we have less than 50 review ratings for top seven competitors again, and you can mix them obviously, right? You can mix the revenue and the reviews. Okay, so that's another cool filter to use. And there's competitor ratings, which is the minimum maximum number of 10 ranking products of keyword search results that have less than the selected star rating. So again, let's say below 3.75 for all the uh, top products. And let's say for a minimum of seven. So all the top seven say are gonna be under 3.75, but all the seven are also gonna be making more than $10,000 a month. So that's a very nice place to improve the niche or to improve the product and have better uh, results for this niche. And again, we have all the uh, other things here pretty much like in the products section of the black box. We have here best sales period, last sales, sales to reviews, competing products, etc., etc., etc. Now let's continue to competitors. So let's see how this works. With competitors, it's pretty easy. You're gonna input an ASIN, specific ASIN inside the competitor. So let's pick one. Let's pick, for example, this ASIN here of the product that we found previously. And in competitors, we're just gonna input the ASIN and based on specific criteria, we're gonna see all the competitors that are similar to this one, but are in a specific range. So for example, again, if this is the product, let's click on search and we're gonna get all the products, but we can also narrow down the search here. So for example, if we get like 50 competitors that are connected to this product, but this product might have different price ranges. Maybe if it's a kitchen knife, for example, yeah, they're gonna be, cheaper knives, like mid-range price knives and higher price knives. So they're all gonna appear here as competitors. However, we're gonna have only specific price appearing for us. So let's see, we have the specific decorative shelf brackets and we have all the competitors connected to that product. So this way you can also run kind of research to see who's the, uh, essentially who are the competitors, but also we can see specific we priced competitors. So if we can see that the price here is $30, 28, 25, 38, 62, because maybe here are like eight pieces, maybe there are 16 pieces, there are four packs. So we can see based on price, different kind of variations of products in this niche. So let's try, let's use price. So what was that, like $32? So let's see only ones that are priced between 50 or like at least $50, all the uh, decorative shelf brackets that are priced at minimum $50 that are connected to this specific competitor. And we have other criteria here as well that you might use that is also was explained previously. You can play with the criteria. We have again, fulfillment, brand search, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But again, in the competitors, we just wanna see products connected to the product that we are talking about. So let's see, let helium 10 load here. And now we're gonna see only the, I wanna forget the name, the shelf brackets that are over $50, that are connected to this product, that are competitors of this product. And let's see the, usually for some reason, the competitors takes a bit longer to load, but it should finish it in a bit. In three, two, one, boom. So there are 24 products from OD before it was 180 or something. We have 24 of these that are higher tier products in this niche, okay? So as you can see, now we have only the ones that are priced over 50. And it's either maybe higher priced materials, perhaps stronger materials, or just a similar competitor to that price, as you to that product. These might be like, you know, these are pipe shelf brackets. They look like a pipe, you know, when you put them inside the wall, but maybe there are other kind of uh, shelf brackets that are not pipe and they are the quite more expensive ones. So maybe the pipe ones are generally the cheaper 
version of this niche and maybe the other ones that are not pipe might be more expensive etc 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 so in this way you can use the competitors part again it's kind of a nice way to research your niche for different variations of the products based on different price criteria or review counts etc etc maybe you want to find only in your niche the ones that have low re reviews because you want to see why they have the low reviews maybe there are some problems with this product so that's the nice way to use competitors and again we have all the advanced filters here for competitors as well let's continue to niche now it's kind of similar to competitors but not exactly because let's take the same keyword because competitors showed us competitors of a specific ASIN, all right? So that's gonna show you similar products. However, with the niche, it's, it might be a bit more broad. So let's type in the creative shelf break, it's here. And we're gonna have different products that are connected to that one. Cause with the previous one, it was the one that had what is like, uh, what was that? Uh, what was the, this was kind of with these pipes, right? Pipe decor, like pipe shape. But with the niche, we're gonna have all different decorative shelf breakers that we can see and some are pipe some are more like decorative with these like vintage style or whatever that is and we have different different variations so in this way we can further go and check out the niche of this product so and pretty much in the same way you can also use the review count here the price and everything but again it's going to give you the niche of the decorative shelf break it's more broad products rather than the competitors that was actually similar to the one ASIN that we're looking at. And here we have different, different brackets here. This one looks like that, that was more vintage. The other one looked like a pipe. This one looks triangle, etc., etc., etc. And with the other criteria, you're gonna have more options to see products. Why is that good again? Is because if you like the specific niche or specific product, and then you wanna see broader on what is in that niche, you can use niche to find it. And then from this, you can again narrow it down to specifically for example you're like well i like the decorative shelf brackets but yeah these are quite expensive i can't really go with ones that are like over 30 dollars so you put maximum price of 30 dollars you click on search and boom instead of 100, 175 we have 140 products now we're gonna see products that are cheaper you're like yeah well these are good these are good these are on my range of you know what i can sell what i can buy and source etc 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 so that's for the niche again same advanced filters that, like we talked before and yeah pretty much more cool ideas for you to find good products and the last part of the black box is product targeting let me show you how it works product targeting can actually help you with your ppc can help you with extra product ideas and let me show you how it works so in here let's input the asin of these kind of decorative shell breakers that are kind of tube or pipe shaped and we're going to click on search Okay, so what's gonna happen with the product targeting? It's gonna find us different products that Amazon suggests and Hilo test suggests for product targeting, like for PPC, but not only for PPC. Let me explain to you. Here's the source here, okay? That's the new thing we have added to the product targeting. And we have option to select products that are frequently bought together, Amazon suggested, and customer also bought. So what does that mean? Frequently bought together is this, let's get inside the listing, is this kind of a part of a listing under the uh, bullets and under the pictures here that's called frequently bought together so it will show you products that are frequently bought together with this product right that means that usually or frequently people buy this product with this product okay what does that mean that if people buy these two together we can advertise this product on this product or for example maybe if you have this type of shelf brackets right and you wanna advertise it on different listings, so you can advertise it on this listing perhaps, okay? Or you can actually bundle the products. Maybe people buy them together because they wanna use them together to put things on their shelves. I'm just like speculating now. I don't know really exactly know why they're buying it together, but you're gonna have to do the uh, research, but this can help you understand. And also the other thing aside of thinking about together is customer also bought. Customer also bought, usually we'll have it somewhere down here. Uh, let's see, price rate to this item. Yeah, we have uh, customers who viewed this item also viewed, but sometimes we're gonna have like, you see customers who search for black canvas ultimately bought. That's for our previous searches actually. I was searching for black canvas at some of the points here in the video, I guess. 
But sometimes we're gonna have like customers who view this item also viewed, but also there's gonna be customers who bought this item also bought. Okay, and we can have it here in inside the uh, black box or Amazon suggested. Amazon suggests like where Amazon suggests you to advertise your product against. So let's go back here. And for example, let's choose products, okay, that are connected to this product. And that's 190 products that it found automatically. And we wanna see only the frequently bought together products, okay? And how will we see that? Under here, under the uh, F and A, okay? You see Amazon suggested and frequently bought together. So for this ASIN, for B0874C1KF, which is this one, right? We have this product, which is 12 inch industrial back iron pipe shelf, that's our frequently bought together, that we're at some point bought together or are currently bought together, or as you can see right now, this one appears here, probably these are the previous ones that appeared as frequently bought together with him but also they appear as Amazon suggested. So that's for your kind of sponsored ads. It would suggest you to advertise against these products. Again, you gotta test it out. Not everything that Amazon gives you is right, but Amazon also many times suggests good things to you as well. Or you might check customer also bought. Customer also bought, no, for this product, there's no such uh, option. Sometimes there is no such option because of the category. Maybe the category is not mature enough or for many other reasons, it's not gonna appear, but there was some frequently bought together. So in this way, you can get ideas for products. Maybe there's a need for a bundle like this, which has frequently bought together with many ASINs. You can check out the niche, you can see different products that are frequently bought together with similar products, but nobody created such a product as this one. And this can give you ideas for products you can create as bundles perhaps. And that's pretty cool in my opinion, because bundles can solve problems for people that are looking for a solution or they have a problem when you create a solution for them. And if nobody did that and there is demand for that, that can be very good blue ocean for you to get more sales from and in my opinion it's pretty nice and as you can see here we have also different criteria to add here again if you want to check the product targeting for this ASIN and you want to see only specific prices for specific items that you want to advertise against maybe your uh, product is higher priced and you have only specific tier of the same kind of products that you are selling at and you're in the price wise so you maybe want to check specific prices or any other variation of criteria that you want to add to that and in this way as I mentioned yeah you can create bundles you can find more ideas for your PPC products and sometimes it's going to be different products by the way maybe it's not going to be even such a pipe shelf or something it's going to be maybe something else that's connected maybe some sort of the shelf itself maybe for people who who are buying the shelves yes and they have shelves that don't have these kind of pipe shelf brackets with them that are only the shelf. And then you can advertise against these because you're gonna see like, oh, wait a minute, here is something that they are not providing me with. And here's a dude that's advertising here that does have it. And then you might get sales from there for a PPC. And also it might create frequently bought together for that shelf that does not have the pipe shelves and they will buy it with your product. So you're gonna get even more traffic. So in this way you can use the product targeting it's a pretty cool part of the black box. Now, if you're interested in learning more about product research on Amazon, please make sure you watch this playlist over here, which has tons of videos that I have for you that are connected to product research on Amazon. And if you want more videos about Helium 10 and more Helium 10 tutorials, make sure you watch this playlist over here. It has over 70 different tutorials for Helium 10. May you have a great day, enjoy watching, and yeah, just watch any of these too. <laughs> Bye, see you in the next one.